In this video, I'm going to show you my new improved drop down interaction. Okay, so many of you have probably seen the drop down interaction or drop down uh, text item that you can get from the learning interactions uh, icon in your toolbar. And uh, while it's fine, it works okay, it kind of looks a, a little bit old and dated and stuff like that. I had uh, one of my clients reach out to me and ask for what I would do. And I did mention that I had a previous uh, um, learning interaction that I created that replaces that, but he was really hoping for the whole drop down interaction. So I worked on this solution and I thought I would share it with all of you. Let's get started. Okay, so you can see by my slide here, I've created it kind of like a multiple choice question. So let me explain what's on the screen first of all. I have a back button, I have a submit button, and I have a next button, and it's important to note that this is gonna be forced navigation. So I have the next button set up to be not visible in output. I have a multi-state object that you can't presently see right now, but it contains two additional states a correct caption and an incorrect caption. So depending on whether you chose the correct option from the drop down selector, you would uh, see this, of course, once you hit submit as well. Now, here I have um, a shape used as a button to be my drop down selector that you appear. And I've added this little custom character from the character map in Windows. And I just simply say, make a selection. I also have this grouped set of shapes here, which are all buttons. They're all set up to be used as buttons for option one, option two, and option three. And of course, I'll show you how to make that all work. And at the top, I have a simple shape with some captions in it, um, simply explaining what the expectation is for your learners to do here. And of course, kind of a cool background as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is add a variable to this project so that we can keep track of which of the three options in our drop down menu have been selected. So I'm going to click on the project drop down menu and select variables. I'm going to click on add new and I'm going to call this variable underscore drop down zero one in the event that I have more than one of these interactions in this project. I don't need to give it an initial value. I'm just going to press save. And of course, now I have that variable available to me. I can go ahead and close the variables window. And the very first thing we're going to do is write an advanced action for our make a selection item here. I should point out that this object is a multi state object. If we go in there, you can see I have uh, additional states with the various different choices that are going to be available in the drop down selector. So let's go ahead and write a very simple advanced action here. So we're going to click on project. We're going to click on advanced actions and I'm going to call this click the drop down. Okay. All we want to do in this is show drop down zero one, which is the grouped object containing the three individual choices or shapes used as buttons. That's it. The reason I'm doing this in advanced action is because when I click on any object and use a single action, it assumes a uh, continue playing the project. So if you want to avoid that, you can uncheck continue playing the project or simply write it as an advanced action to be sure. This will also ensure that you don't pause partway through some audio that's playing or something else happening. So let's go ahead and save that as an action. Click OK and click Close. And we can go ahead to the Actions tab for our drop down selector and execute Advanced Actions. And of course, choose Click the drop down. So the next thing we're going to do is select the first of our three selections in the drop down selector here. And we're going to write an advanced action for that. So I'm going to go to project 
advanced actions. And I'm going to call this option selection 01. I'm going to assign the variable that I shortly ago created with a literal value of one. I'm going to change the state of my drop down button itself to reflect the selection I've just made. So change state of drop down selector to option one. So the text for option one is displayed at the top. And now I'm simply going to hide the grouped object with my three selections, which is called drop down zero one. I can save this as an action, but while I'm in the advanced action window, I can very easily create the same advanced action for option two and option three by clicking on the duplicate action icon, renaming the action name to be now in this case, option two or selection two. And we're going to assign drop down zero one with a value of two because it's the second choice. And we're going to change the drop down item itself to reflect option two as well. And this will be the same. We'll hide the uh, grouped object. We update that action, click OK, and let's duplicate it once more. We'll get rid of that duplicate of part, change the extension to 0, 3. We'll change the value that we're storing in our variable to 3. And we'll display option 3 up above. And I'll go ahead and update that action. Go ahead and close this now. So now what we want to do, now that we've created our advanced actions, we'll just make sure that we're executing the appropriate advanced action for each of the items in our grouped object. So execute advanced actions, now selection two, execute advanced actions, and three. There we go. So now's a good point. We could jump right into creating our submit button but now's a good point just to make sure the drop down selection behaves as you would expect it to. I've already gone ahead and replaced um, or disabled the click sound and also added a hand cursor so the appearance of your cursor changes when you roll over just to have a visual cue that this is something you can click on. Let's go ahead and preview this in HTML5 in browser and make sure the first half of this interaction works. So here's my browser. We'll go ahead and click that. So let's make a selection, option one. So it switches to option one, option two, option three. So that's exactly what we were hoping it to behave like. So let's go ahead and close the browser and finish this interaction. So next we're gonna create a, an advanced action for the submit button. So we're going to go into the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. We'll call this submit 01 or something like that. This will be a conditional advanced action because we're gonna check the condition of that variable where we've stored which option has been selected. And uh, as you can see here, if it happens to be option two, that's the correct answer. So let's set up a conditional advanced action and we'll say if our user variable that we created before is equal to the literal value of two, in other words, you've selected option two, we're gonna do a couple of things. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the state of our feedback caption, our multi-state feedback caption to correct. We're also going to disable this button here. So they can't change their answer at this point. So let's go ahead and disable the drop down selector because that's the actual piece that will be disabled at this point. And we've previously hidden the next button. So now we want to show it because obviously people will need to move forward now that they've completed this interaction. So we will show our next button. 
Now, if this is not true, if it's equal to one or equal to three, we want to show the incorrect message, but we want to do pretty much everything else here. So I'm going to select all of these items by holding down my shift key and selecting all the lines. And we're going to use the copy action right here on our actions bar and go down to the else section and we'll paste these in. And all we need to change here is which message we're going to display. So if it's not correct or anything other than two, we're going to choose incorrect. So we can save that as an action, click OK and click close. And of course, make sure that you select your submit button. And for the actions for the submit button, we'll change that to execute advanced actions. And of course, choose submit 01. So let's test it out and make sure it works. Preview in HTML5 in browser. Here we go. So let's try getting it incorrect first. I'll choose option three and hit submit. Ah, oh, I selected the wrong answer, but I can still move forward in the course. Let's refresh this window and see what it looks like when we get it right. Now I'll choose option two, hit submit. Congratulations, you selected the correct answer. Press the forward button to continue. And of course, we're ready to go forward. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.